In this video, I'd like to go over some of the workflow options that you can configure directly in Camera Raw for how you would like your photos output. Now you'll notice at the bottom of your image is displayed your current workflow settings. To edit these, all we need to do is click on this link and your workflow options should appear. Now there are quite a few settings here that you need to pay particular attention to, the first of which is your colour working space. Now I prefer to work in Adobe RGB, which is a well-rounded profile that's not too large and not too small. There are some other options that are available to you, and two other profiles that I recommend you take a look at are Profoto RGB, which is a much larger working space, and sRGB, which is actually a slightly smaller color working space than Adobe RGB, especially in the greens. Now in a future video, I intend on doing a comparison of different color working spaces and showing you some of the benefits and disadvantages of each. From here, we can choose to set the bit depth we'd like our files outputted as. So I prefer to work in 16 bits per channel, uh, primarily because I'd like to retain as much information from the original raw file as possible. Uh, you can choose to set it to 8 bits per channel, but just remember that 8 bits contains only 256 levels of information to work with, as opposed to what a raw file, a standard raw file shooting in say 12 bit, would contain 4096 levels of information. Now that information all gets retained when you leave it on a higher bit depth level, such as 16 bits. You can then choose to size your photos. Now I tend to ignore this setting primarily because these actually don't relate to anything for me um, because I like to size my photos directly to the final print size that I like to get printed. And in my case that's 36 by 24 inches for a 3 to 2 ratio photo. And in this case it's the largest size that this actually goes up to is 6144 pixels wide, which is actually a lot smaller than what I need to get my, my file sized at. So the way to get around this is to use the crop tool and set up a custom crop size, uh, which you enter the size of the final print that you'd actually like to get it sized to, and then you crop your file. Um, that way there's no fuss and it all gets interpolated in camera raw, which I think is quite a good thing in the end. From here you can choose to set the resolution of your files. I tend to leave this just at 300 pixels per inch. You also have options available to you whether you'd like to add additional sharpening to all of your files. Uh, there are a couple of settings here from screen sharpening, glossy paper sharpening and, and matte paper sharpening, each of which allows you to set an amount um, and you can actually choose to increase or decrease the amount of sharpening that is applied. And finally, you have an option here where you can choose whether you'd like your photos to be output into Photoshop as smart objects. I like to leave this checked. Um, smart objects are an amazing feature of Photoshop and in a future video I'm going to go into some depth of actually how to use smart objects and how they actually tie back into your camera raw files because you can do some really neat things that just weren't possible before smart objects were introduced into Photoshop and Camera Raw.